Hey guys, this is Licious Kid from Climax Combo, and today we are here to talk about the updated ban list for Weiss Schwartz. Of course, this only applies to the Japanese meta, and um, this ban list is er up earlier than it usually is because this is an emergency ban list. Because um, I'm sure many of you guys do know, if you guys keep up with the, like the tournament scene or just Japanese meta or just even Facebook grants, um, right now Kantai and Nisekoi on on a tier of their own. They're kind of pretty much tier zero. Every tournament result is always Nisekoi or Kantai. And understandably why the two sets are on a tier on their own. They're just really powerful, just far too powerful really. And no set can really contest against these sets. And you know, when a, when a game gets like this, the developers have to step in because right now the tournament scene is just too bland, too boring, nothing surprising. And yeah. So this is the emergency ban list. Uh, it, is, it is effective at the 29th, so about one week is when this uh, list will be effective. I can't actually read any of this, so thank you plus two soul for doing a translation. And yeah, I'll just get right to it. Uh, first off, for Nisekoi, ah, it hurts because I run Nisekoi myself. However, it's totally understandable because uh, the set is pretty ridiculous. So first off, Nisekoi, limited to one per deck, is the level 3 Marika. However, on top of this, they decided to add a choice of 3 to the set. Uh, if you guys do, are not familiar with the choice of 3 is, is that um, out of these 3 cards, you can only run one of them in your deck. However, the one you choose, you can run to as many as you want. So for Nisekoi, the first one is dependent on promise event, all 4 colors. So the red, yellow, blue, green one, they all share the same name, so respectively, uh, all of them are added to the choice of three. Next up is the deck refresher Onodetta, the 2-1 free refresh Onodetta. And lastly is the level 0 global Raku assist that also salvages a pendant on play. However, uh, Bushiro decided to add this other condition to it. Uh, it's pretty funny, but uh, here it is. Uh, if the following conditions are met, the above restrictions do not apply characters. All your characters have Marika in their name. Events. Only Marika related events can be ran, meaning the red pendants and the DL5 uh, damage event. It's a 3-3 event if I recall correctly. And lastly, only Marika related climaxes can be run, meaning the door, the stock plus soul, and the pants climax can be ran. Um, I'll go over the other cards uh, after I talk about Nisekoi first. So first off is the level 3 Tachibana. Um, I guess I'll go over how Nisekoi works first. So if you guys are not familiar with how the set Nisekoi works, um, pretty much Nisekoi is a recollection based set as you can see here and here. Uh, Nisekoi is pretty much revolved around this recollection uh, effect where they must have a pendant of promises in memory to gain powerful effects. And how they gain Pendant of Promises in memory is by playing Pendants of Promises. Um, each color has a Pendant of Promise, so here's the red one, the yellow one, the blue one, the green one. Um, each color has a Pendant of Promise, and when you play the effect, uh, they send themselves to memory, and each Pendant does have a different effect. Uh, they're all pretty good, and yeah, so once, so the, pretty much Nisekoi, pretty much you have to play a Pendant, you get it to memory, and the goal of Nisekoi is to get two pendants in memory at least to th get their level 3 Marika and to get their level 3 Onodetas off. And the first one here, this card is limited to one. You can only run one of her in any of your Nisekoi decks unless you're running the last condition, which I guess I'll talk about later. But first off, level 3 Marika. If you guys don't know what she does, is she has a recollection of two. Uh, if you, this card attacks and there are two or more pendants in memory, this card deals one damage to your opponent. And of course, damage can cancel can occur. And what she, her other effect is um, this ability can only be activated once per turn. When this card reverses its opponent in battle, and if you have two or more key characters, you can pay two, discard three. If you do, put this card back to stand. This card is completely understandable, and it's it's totally understandable why Bushiro would limit this card to one. This card is just really stupid, good, and is pretty much broken. Um, the fact that uh, this card deals one on attack already is 
pretty ridiculous. Yes, you do need to have two pendants of promises in memory. However, honestly, that's not very difficult to achieve because uh, of how the set works. So first off, the burn one on attack is just retarded. Also, the second effect is also very retarded. Um, on reverse, you can pay two, discard three, and this card goes back to stand, meaning that it can attack again. And when it attacks again, of course, you get the burn one on attack again. And double attack is very powerful. And also the conditions for this card is very easy. The fact that it's pay two, discard three, it sounds heavy, but honestly, it's not. Or yes, it is heavy, but um, most almost every game I play with my Nisekoi deck, I can usually get off two of these off in one turn. And just getting multiple Marikas on the field and getting multiple double attacks on the same turn is ridiculous. You can get opponent from level two to level three. You can get an opponent to level 2 to level 4 pretty easily if your opponent is level 3 and you have 3 of these Marikas in your hand, which is not very difficult for the set to achieve. You can pretty much, uh, your opponent might as well scoop because they're probably going to lose. So, level 3 Marika, understandable. This card is very powerful, especially when you use multiple of them in the same turn. This card is pretty much unstoppable and it's one of the reasons why this uh, set is really ridiculously broken. So... Now you can only run one, which is honestly kind of nice of them to do because this card is still really good. And yeah, um, I'll go over my thoughts of Nisekoi as a whole at the end. Next up, the choice of three cards. So on top of that one limit of Marika, we now have a choice. And first off, I would like to talk about the pendants. Um, yes, there is a pendant for each color. And I would say the most popular pendants is the red one the blue one and the yellow one. The green one, I don't see it being played very often. However, it's okay. I've seen uh, a couple lists run the green one and uh, I can see it working. I haven't tried it myself, but you know, it's still okay. So each, the red pendant, of course, is probably the most popular. I'll just go over each pendant really quickly if you guys don't know it. Um, you pretty much when you play the red pendant, you pay one, Rest two characters, salvage two key characters, which is the entire set, and then you discard a card, and then the red pendant goes to memory. Very good card. The blue pendant of promise is a 3k backup, and uh, it sends itself to memory. The yellow pendant, when you use the pendant, or when you use the event, you search for a key character, add it to your hand, and then this card sends itself to memory. Uh, my personal favorite pendant, probably, because I think it's really good, and it has Chitoge, and Chitoge is my favorite Nisekoi girl, so definitely my favorite one and lastly the green one the least popular however uh, I still see it being run the green one is you choose a key character you give a plus three five power until the end of your opponent's next turn and then it sends itself to memory pretty understandable why this card would be choiced as well or these cards would be choiced as well is because uh, it's pretty much the heart and soul of the deck you must get at least two of your, your goal is to get two of them off into memory so that way your level 3 Tachibana and your level 3 Onodera is online. Uh, the pendants themselves are very powerful. The red event is good, the yellow event is good, the blue event is good, and heck, even the green one is playable, so understandable why the pendants would, pendants would be hit. Next up is, I guess I'll talk about Onodera. Next up is the free refresh Onodera 217k. If you guys don't know what she does, this is what she does. Um, when she's playing for a handy stage and with 5 or less cards in your deck, uh, return all cards to your waiting room back to your library. If so, shuffle your library, draw a card. She has another effect of rest two key characters. Choose one of your characters against plus 2k till the end of the turn. This card is uh, ridiculous as well. Um, honestly, any free refresh is really, 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 really good. It may not sound like much, but honestly, it's so good. Uh, just denying yourself that one refresh damage it's just so good, um, especially if you get multiple of these off in a game, which is very, uh, which is really easy for Nisekoi to do. They have a lot of salvage thanks to the red pendant of promise, and you can even search it out by the level three Marik or you can even search it out by the level three Onodera. There's just a lot of ways for Nisekoi to search out for this card. Heck, even the one one yellow event can even search out for it. So a lot of ways for Nisekoi to get the free refresh card. And a free refresh is just very powerful. It may not sound like much, but if you guys do play the set or play against a set that has free refresh, you will see why free refresh is really good. And on top of the free refresh, you get to plus, you get to draw a card, just icing on the cake. 
So yeah, um, the pay to give it to key character plus 2k. Honestly, I think I've used it only once. Because usually I always brainstorm or use the red event. So honestly, I haven't used this second effect too often. But it's whatever. The, pretty much the free refresh is what makes this card really good. Yes, it's really good. But because it's in Nisekoi and Nisekoi is already really, really good. This, this card had to be added to the list because Nisekoi as a whole is just too powerful. And this card is one of the reasons why it was very powerful. So understandable why this card would get hit. Everyone knew this card was going hit, to get hit on the list. And lastly, the level 0 Raku Global 500 Assist. Um, what this card does, it's a 500 global for key characters. Pretty much 500 for your entire all your characters. And it has another effect of when this card is played from hand to stage. You can discard a card. If you do, choose one pendant of promise in your waiting room and return it to your hand. Don't forget, each pendant has, you know, they all have the same name, the pendant of promise. So you can grab any of these events. All for the cost of discarding a card in your hand. This card pretty much added a lot of consistency to the deck. Um, it wasn't really a problem getting Pendants of Promises in your hand because of this Raku. It was pretty much a really good bond to get the uh, Pendants to, to get the events in your hand. And it really made the deck super consistent. Like uh, if you ran this card, you're pretty much going to get Pendants of Promises to your memory every game because it's just so good. It's a 500 global which is already really good and on top of the fact that you can discard any card from your hand to get a Pendant of Promise in your waiting room to your hand it's just super powerful it's super easy to refresh with 8 climaxes because you can always just discard any lingering climaxes in your hand to the waiting room and on top of that you get to grab a Pendant of Promise in your waiting room to your hand this guy was just super powerful and just super good so it's kind of understandable of why this card would get added to the list. So, yeah, there it is. These are the choice of threes, the pendants, the 2-1 Onodera, the level 0 Raku. And on top of that, you can only run one level 3 Marika. I think this is... It's pretty fair. It's not the worst thing ever. Um, they were nice enough to at least let us keep the level 3 Onodera. The level 3 Onodera is a really good card and thankfully we still have that. And yeah, it really does suck. Of course, out of the choice of three, you should, I would say you have to pick the Pendant of Promises because there's no point, there's no real point in running Marika. Yes, she can still double attack because a double attack is not linked to her recollection. However, you know, she becomes far more powerful if you ha hit the recollection. So, of course, you should choose Dependence. They're kind of forcing us to choose Dependence of Promises. That way, you can still play the level 3 uh, Onodera. And that way, your 1 level 3 Marika is still uh, really good. Also, the level 3 Marika, um, with how the set works, it's still really easy to grab the level 3 Marika from your waiting room. Uh, I would say your main priority in every game is to grab the level 3 Marika from your deck or waiting room and add it to your hand and Nisekoi has a lot of ways to do that you can grab it by the level 3 Onodera you can salvage it by the level 1 1 uh, red pendant you can search for it with the yellow pendant you can even salvage it from the level 1 Tachibana combo so uh, grabbing the touch grabbing one level 3 Marika is going to be no problem honestly as good as free refresh is free refresh wouldn't be as good in, uh, in a gimped set so honestly you really shouldn't be choosing this as your choice of three. And lastly, Raku, why the hell would you pick this guy if <laughs> if you can't run the pendants along with him? So Raku is a dead is a no brainer. You don't choose him. Don't choose the Kozaki, of course. Pretty obvious, but you should definitely choose the Pendant of Promises as your choice of three. Um It's not the end of it does hurt, but definitely not the end of the world because there are replacements for each card. Um of course, there's no replacement for level 3 Marika. However, you still get to choose one. You still get to one run in your deck. And it can still double attack and it still burns on a play. Or it burns on attack. So, definitely, I guess it's nice of them to do. Um, I guess I will pull out the alternatives that come to my mind. The easiest way for me to find them is via Yute. So, to replace the level 0 Rakus, of course, you can run... The Chibi PRs, each of them have a pay one bond for the event. 
debatable if it's as good as the level zero Daku. The level zero Daku does not plus. However, uh, the discard it only breaks even. However, the level zero Daku was a 500 global, and uh, it was it had a discard effect, meaning you could discard climaxes. So it's still really good. However, the level zero Chibis all have a pay one bond for the events, which is really good in its own. And so. Uh, I'd expect these PRs to jump in price, and it makes me very sad because I only own one Tachibana PR, and I need to get my hand on more. But uh, definitely uh, consider these cards in your new Nisekoi builds. Uh, these PRs are probably going to be very good because uh, they add more consistency to the deck by allowing you to salvage Pendants of Promises in your waiting room. And their secondary effects are actually not bad, so definitely consider a couple PRs in your new Nisekoi decks. For assists, we lose. You probably lost the best assist in Nisekoi, the level zero Daku. He was really good. However, probably the next best thing would be the level zero Chitoge assist. Um, this card is very expensive, and as you can see, it's sold out. And as you can see, it's 4,900 yen. Essentially, it's 50 bucks. But uh, if you can get your hands on this, uh, I advise you do so. I have a playset, so lucky me. But yeah, I would say this is the next best assist to replace those level 0 Odakus. So, we have alternatives. Of course, not as good, but hey, at least we got something. We can still play the level 0. We can still play the level 3 Ono Deta, or we can still play the level 3 Marika. We can still run the level 3 Ono Deta, and not as good, but hey, we have options in the Chibis, and of course, the level 0 uh, Chitoke. It's not bad card in itself, and it's definitely a viable replacement for the level 0 Odaku. So, there it is, and oh, I almost forgot um, the restrictions. Um, so you can ignore everything above if you pretty much run a Marika waifu deck, a, a totally Marika waifu deck. So all your characters must have Marika in its name. So right there, you can't run the free refresh on Odetta, and you can't run the level 0 Daku assist. The only events you can run is the red pendant right here, and that in itself is really good. And this other event, I might as well pull it up. Yeah, the 3-3 three, three event, pay 3, deal 5 damage. No one ran this, but uh, it does have Marika in its net, so that's why it's on the list. And lastly, only Marika related climaxes can be run, meaning only the stock 1 soul, the gate, and the pants can be used in this Marika deck. Uh, what you gain out of this is you can actually run 4 level 3 Marikas in the deck. Honestly, this uh, Marika waifu deck is actually kind of playable because um, I actually think it's kind of playable because the Marika cards aren't really bad. Um, you can still run the Red Pendant of Promise, which is very good. Uh, you can run the Chibi uh, Marikas, which is also very good. They have a pretty good uh, level zero assist. I think it's like 500 for key characters, and then tap give a uh, key character plus 500. That's a Marika, so not bad. Um, the, there's a pretty good Marika card in every level that's not level 2. I, the biggest downfall for the Marika build would probably be level 2. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, at the top of my mind, I can't think of a really good Marika. So, a level 2 at least. But in exchange, you get to run 4 of these level 3 Tachibanas. And that in itself is very, 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 very scary. But don't forget, um, Tachibana still has a healer. Um... Uh, Right here. They still have a healer, so personally I think this Marika build is still viable because they have a healer, they have the broken level 3, you still have the red search event, you still have the one level 1 climax combo that salvages on reverse, and yeah, all they're really missing is a level 2 game, so I still think uh, this Marika build will be uh, pretty viable. Maybe it won't top. But uh, I still think it's playable, and I'm probably going to make a Marika deck of my own. So there we go. And, on, and don't forget, uh, if you guys don't know, Nisekoi is getting a second season, I think, in next spring? I like to say uh, spring of 2015, but don't quote me on that. Spring of 2015, I believe, uh, Nisekoi is getting a second anime boost, or a second anime. So, uh, of course, with that, Bushiro will probably release another Nisekoi set. And hey, if that Nisekoi set has a uh, level 3 Tachibana that can come out at level 2, then I think uh, all the problems of this uh, restriction will be met, will be, uh, you know, will be gone. Because I think the only real problem with this uh, Marika-only build is uh, 
Black a level 2 game, and probably level 0. I didn't think about that, but I think their level 0 is pretty bad too. But Black a level 2 game, and probably lack a level 0 game. Honestly, if the next booster brings a really good level t uh, 2 Ono Dead uh, Tachibana, either in the form of a changer or in the form of just a really powerful level 2, then uh, definitely I think uh, they might have to get rid of this because the level 3 Marika, having 4 of it or 3 of it is just too good. So, not the end of the world for us Nisekoi players, but it does hurt. But totally understandably why. Total understandable why it had to be done. Now I will go on to the next set, Kontai Collection. Um, I've talked, not much has changed for Kontai. The only card that got changed is Junyo. She has been added to the ban list. Before she used to be on the choice of three, but now she's completely banned. Understandably why, because it's pretty dumb. So just straight up ban. And still Musashi is still in the choice of one. Inazuma still in the choice of one, understandably why. And lastly, the, a new... The new girl added to the choice of three is Akagi Kai. I've already talked about Junyo, Musashi, and Inazuma in the previous uh, banlist video, so I'm not going to go over them with them, over them again. However, I will talk about Akagi Kai because she is a newcomer to the banlist. Akagi Kai, if you guys don't know what she does, she's a three-two-nine-five um, on play. You can draw two, ditch one. Uh, at the start of your climax phase, put all cards in your stock to the waiting room, and all your characters get plus one K to the end of your opponent's next turn. And lastly, when the battle opponent of this becomes reversed, and you have the gold bar in your climax zone, you may send that character to the clock. This card is just really, 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 really good. Uh, draw two, ditch one is all right. The stock thing might sound painful and might sound like it's bad, but honestly, it's not because when you hit level three, most of the time you just kind of go all in and you just play all your cards in your hand. And if you play multiple of these Akagi Kais, pro you're probably going to have like what? You might even have no stock in your climax. You might have no stock anyways, or you might only have one or two stock left after playing a bunch of Akagi Kais. When you played a bunch of Akagi Kais, you drew a bunch of cards. Um, and then at climax phase, their effect goes off. Uh, if you have a multiple Akagi Kais, they all stack. And if you have no cards in your stock, the effect still goes off. So you give all your characters plus 1k. Add this on top of multiple Akagi Kais, and you got a pretty annoying wall to deal with. And lastly, the gold bar combo itself is very powerful. Um, it's very powerful because Kontai as a whole is a very powerful set, and giving this giving them a very powerful game ender in the form of Akagi Kai. You know, a lot of game, a lot of decks run Akagi Kai, so not a surprise. Um, giving them Akagi Kai as uh, a game ender is just really good. So understandable why Akagi Kai has to hit a list has to hit the list will this be the end of the world for contact collection players no I honestly don't think so because contact just got another set uh, two weeks ago oh that's my phone sorry about that contact collection got a new set two weeks ago and honestly uh, you know none of those cards are hit so the new cards will probably still make contact really broken anyway so Contact Collection, I don't see it being hit at all. Again, the last ban list didn't do shit, so I honestly don't think this ban list will do much either. Zero no Sukaima, no longer restricted. They used to have a choice of two, choice of three, I believe, last time. They had a choice before, but now all of those cards are gone. So, you, you're, you, you Zero no Sukaima players, you can rejoice, because now your deck is back to what it should be. However, will the deck top... I honestly don't think so because Zero no Tsukaima is hit heavily by anti-salvage and anti-heal. Of course, anti-salvage and anti-heal is very powerful right now for very good reasons. So, and Zero no Tsukaima is like just totally devastated by anti-salvage, anti-heal. So, will Zero no Tsukaima top even though their restrictions are gone? Probably not, unless there are no anti-salvage or anti-heal sets in the entire tournament, but that's unlikely, so. Uh, it's nice of them to do, but will they make it? I don't think so, but we'll just have to see. And lastly, Disgaea. Uh, they took out one card. They limited this card to one per deck, and that is the level 3 Laharl here. I'm sure many of you guys do know him. He's a very old card. He's even out in English, but uh, I'll go over what he does really quick. He's a 3-2-10k. When he's playing from hand to stage, he heals, 
And what he does is uh, set on it's a startup, so you can send him to memory. And if you do, choose up to two angels and or demon cards in your waiting room and return them to your hand. I'm sure you guys do know this, uh, and you guys just can see from his effect, he is honestly ridiculous. When he was at 2, even when he was at 2, this guy was topping a lot, and Supreme Overho Overlord Laharl is just an amazing card. However, now, he used to be straight up banned, but now he is at 1, and for good reasons. Honestly, since the Disgaea hit, or it's just, since the Disgaea nerfed, no one ever played this guy. I haven't seen a single Disgaea player since the hit came. So, and that's really sucks, you know. I I like Disgaea. I think this guy is a really cool series. I am a fan of the game, a huge fan of the game. So, kind of sad to see this guy completely disappear since the nerfs. And uh, I guess it's nice of them to let them run one this guy or to run one run one Supreme over the Harl. But uh, I am not a Disgaea player. And I don't really see this uh, one addition bringing this guy back to his previous glory. I don't think this guy is really going to start topping just because of this. But uh, who knows? Uh, we'll just have to see. I don't think anything's going to really happen, but hey, who knows? And that is it for this ban list. Uh, you know, people, you might be surprised. Maybe you wanted to see a couple sets get hit. Maybe Little Busters. Little Busters is a very powerful set already. And maybe Little Busters will start topping now that these sets got hit. But uh, do keep in mind, uh, this is an emergency ban list. So if there's a couple series you wanted to see get off the ban list, like how do he... Uh, you know, you, there's still a chance because this is an emergency ban list. The next ban list will be up sometimes uh, early next year. So you can keep your eyes out for that. And... Uh, yeah, I guess there's not much uh, else to say, just a little wrap-up. Uh, Nisekoi did get hurt, but honestly, I don't think it's the end of the world, because we do have replacements. Yeah, the level 3, there is no replacement for level 3 Marika. However, I think running 1, I think uh, the 1 you can still run, is still going to be really good, because uh, sometimes you only need 1 to win the game. So, I still think uh, it hurts, it sucks, but understandable, because this card is just freaking broken. So, that sucks, but, um, you know, of course... You have to choose dependence. There's no doubt about it. Choose dependence as your choice of one. Uh, sucks. You don't get. We don't have free refresh anymore. But what can you do? The level zero Daku. You know, there's no real replacement for him. However, to make the deck more consistent, run the chibis. You can run two or three chibis, and I think you'll be just fine. The chibis themselves are not bad cards. The only real problem with these chibis is that they're pretty hard to get. As you can see, they're all sold out, and they've all been sold out for a while now. So. A little hard to get your hands on, but if you do own some, or if you do, if you can't get your hands on some, I definitely uh, would advise that you do so. And of course, I think the best uh, assist in Nisekoi now will probably be this uh, Chitoge PR. If you can't get this Chitoge PR, maybe you can consider running this. Uh, I wonder if I can find it. Chitoge, where are you? Um, where is it? Nope, nope. Hmm. Ah, I can't find it. Whatever. It's pretty much a 500 global. It's a level 1 assist. It's 500 global. And, um,. It's pretty much 500 global, and if you have one pen in a promise, or no, if you have two pens of promises in memory, it adds another 500. So it pretty much uh, becomes like a 1k global if you have a full field. So, oh, here it is. So, uh, 500 global, and if you have two pendants in memory, it becomes a 500 in front. So this card is really good as well. Uh, if you can't get your hands on the PR, or even if you own the PRs, I would say this card is definitely a good contender and a definitely a viable option to run in your Nisekoi builds. So, and of course, this lousy uh, waifu build is there for you, but uh, I still think I think it's going to be okay. And definitely when the next set comes around, keep your eye open for the really good level 2 Marikas and even really good level 0 Marikas, because... Uh, you don't know that they might mess up, or hey, they might even attend it. They might make a really broken level 2 Marika, or a broken advanced summon level 3 Marika. And then uh, this build will probably be really good. So yeah, keep your eyes out for that. Of course, Kantai, yeah, who cares? Junyo's banned, Akagi got hit. 
Honestly, I think the set will be just fine, which I hate. Zero no Tsukaima, hooray, however, will it top? I don't think so. Disgaea, I guess it's nice of them to do, however, I don't think they're going to be topping anytime soon. So that is all I have for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and until next time.